Hey everybody, it's Ed O'Keefe, and um, I just finished my first ever health, uh, health supplement product and human performance intensive where I showed a group of about 50 of the highest level marketers I've ever been around the exact process on how to, how to go from where they are to growing their health supplement product or human performance business. And I'd really like to invite you to join me at the next intensive. This was outstanding, as you see with, I and mean, we have some testimonials, we'll show you some footage. Um, but I really wanna encourage you to uh, just take that next step, learn more about what we're doing. Come and join us, we have a great group. As you can tell by all the uh, testimonials or stories that people are sharing, this environment is one that's just so electric, so amazing, and uh, I'm honored to be a part of it, and I'd love to have you to be a part of it as well. So that's it. Make it a great day, and I look forward to meeting you soon. Our next guest speaker is uh, Jeff Usner. If you don't know Jeff, um, Jeff... Jeff and I go back, what, about six years? No, maybe it's even longer than that. Seven, seven years, eight years. I mean, War Room, I think it's the first time we met. What's that? How many kids ago? Oh, my gosh, right. Um, and um, Jeff is always one of the smartest guys in the room, if not the smartest, when it comes to media buying and um, hacking, <coughs> hacking things and making things work very strategically. Um, in fact, he figured out when he saw that the can I this? when he figured out that the hotel was booked, he knew that he can go online and book it for four nights and then leap ahead of everybody, get a room, and then after the second night he just cancels it. So he got a room here. I never knew that. You guys are funny, dude. You guys are funny. I just show up in location. I just do the law of attraction. I show up in locations, check my luggage in, and be like, can you put me at the top of the list? And that, that's what works for me. Uh, that would stress out everybody else, I understand. Um, hey, so really quick, we're just going to dive right in. Jeff is a master at media buying. And um, for anyone who is not a media buyer or even media buyers, this, is, this guy's got magic. So I'm going to let you just go and uh, get out of your way. All right. Thanks for having me. So let's give him a big round of applause saying Jeff Lesnar. Is it printing my voice now? Yeah. All right, cool. I'm glad I get to follow Roland. Thank you, Ed, for that. <laughs> I thought I'd have a decent thing here, but I don't know. Um, but no, thanks, Ed, for having me here. And it's always good to come see Ed and see Roland and Vinny, who's going to be sharing more, who already did. Um, being in a group of guys like that is really critical in your business. I just want to start with that. Ed and I have gone back and forth a lot over the years on he'll have a challenge, I'll have a challenge, just queuing and pinging off each other. Uh, same thing with Roland, with Vinny. Um, and there's just a lot of value in that. So if you don't have that around you, look at a way to get that around you. Um, it becomes critical as you start to scale and you run into new problems and new challenges. Um, and that's one of the first things I'm going to talk about um, is what are, what's your goal? The thing about media buying is you really got to know what you want to do with your business. Because once you get an offer that works, it can quickly, as you heard from Vinny, you could go, you might think you want $60,000 a day in sales. But when you have it, you might be like, this kind of sucks. I'd like to go back down to 20000 a day. Because there's a whole new level of uh, work and problems and challenges that come. And, and so figuring that out on the front end is critical. Um, because once you do have something that works and you do what, what you're learning at this event, what I'm going to teach you now, you can get all the traffic in the world. And you can have a mess on your hands if you don't know how to deal with it and be out of business very quickly. Or you can scale effectively and have a very profitable business. Because one of the temptations as you start to grow is this thing, every dollar I put in prints three. I'm just going to mortgage the hilt out of everything and put it in. And that's pretty dangerous too. So I'm, <laughs> that's part of what I wanted to start with is what's your, what's your starting budget? What do you want to accomplish? And I, these aren't things you have to answer now. But this, you have to think this way when you start to get into media buying. Set a monthly budget. Maybe you guys don't have budgets. But have a budget quarterly, monthly, annually. Start with something. Um, the other thing that I find when I'm, I'm helping people with buying media and um, buying traffic online is sometimes you use Compete, you use SimilarWeb, use all the tools that Roland's sharing with you, 
and you think you're, you have to be this big, you have to get that big traffic source. You got to start with this one. Like you might see compete or similar web saying, hey, this is the number one affiliate sending this much traffic. You could go for the 10th rank one and have enough traffic just from that one or from 10 to 15 to build the business that you'd want to build, if that makes sense. So be strategic. Don't always go after the top type of sources. And that goes back to knowing who you are, knowing what you want in your business. Because if you don't know it, uh, you're going to wake up five years from now and go, what the hell am I doing here? Uh, I know because I've done it <laughs> in other businesses as well. Um, this isn't what I pictured. This isn't what I wanted. It might, you might not even know, and that's part of the journey, I guess, in this whole thing. Um, the other question I always give to people when they start buying media is how much are you willing to lose, which is a really encouraging thought uh, when you go to start to spend money. And the reason is, is I've found a lot of people who think you do all the research, like Roland is teaching, like Ed's teaching. That's critical, and I'm going to go into it more. But you do all of that, and you still go out, and you can just totally tank on a buy. So are you willing to lose 500 bucks, 5,000, 50,000, whatever the number is? Go into a buy, doing all the research, everything, but be OK with losing everything on that buy. And if you're not OK with that, don't do the buy. Um, because it's just going to lead to a lot of stress and worry and doubt in your business. And I know because I've done it. Uh, again, these are things I've done uh, myself. Um, the other thing you're hearing over and over and over, and I, I say this later in my slides, but I got it from uh, Roland. I don't know where I heard it, but bad data leads to bad decisions. And it's called knowing thy numbers. Vinny was talking about you got to know your metrics. If you don't, you're going to just get hammered and slaughtered. Um, you won't be able to scale. You won't be able to buy. You won't, your, your whole business just won't work. Uh, and know the real numbers, right? And don't get excited about, hey, we're grossing. 3,000 a day, 30,000 a day, 300,000 a day. Gross doesn't really matter. Are you netting out money? Right? And it's really easy when you're doing media buys and maybe you don't have to pay somebody for 30 or 60 days and all this. And, and depending on how you negotiate what you're dealing with, you might have a lot of money start hitting your account and you think you're making a lot of money. I did this seven, eight years ago. Um, hundreds and hundreds of thousands a month coming in. And we got to the end of about six months and I'll go, holy crap, I should have looked at my accounting a little closer. I'm actually losing money every month. Um, that's when I went on to have a stroke from building software, a lot of stress in my life, those types of things. So I'm trying to give you some disclaimers up front. <laughs> Nobody wants a stroke, right? Keep giving us that positive stuff. That's just good. <laughs> this is like a legal presentation. These are all my disclaimers up front. We've got something to take. You do? Awesome. <laughs> Where were you like eight years ago? I wasn't looking up osteoporosis then. Um, another thing is I, I, I didn't know who I'm talking to now. I know some of you have larger businesses. Some of you are just getting going. I imagine some of you are still trying to make your business work. Um, don't take money from your business in the beginning. Uh, your business has to, and, and Vinny was talking about, pump, and it, this is, again, I'm repeating some of the things you've already said, so I'll fly through some of these things. But that might sound weird, but go get a job. Go get uh, something else, or if you have another business, another income stream where this business doesn't put so much pressure on you. Now, there's different things, strategies on that. Sometimes you've got to be all in, those types of things. But I've seen a lot of people start businesses, and they go all in on media buying, and it just blows up in their face. They run up their credit cards. They run up all their debt. They think it's going to work, and then they're in trouble. OK, enough disclaimers. Let's just get into it. <laughs> Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this because I knew it was going to be covered uh, by Ed and by Roland. Um, but what they talked about with reverse engineering uh, is where I spend a majority of my time. It goes to the meeting you talked about that you had that you spent 36000 on doing the research that Roland was saying, then coming into a meeting and having the data. Again, data numbers don't lie, right? Facts tell, stories sell. Um, so you want to have the data in front of you before you make any uh, process or make any decisions on what you're going to do. That's where I spend most of my time. I haven't found anybody who actually will do that for, for you as far as doing all the research. Um, it doesn't just come to traffic. You saw uh, Roland going through some other things. I also do, uh, and we've talked, Ed, you talked about email as well. But analyzing your competition. Uh, what process do they work? Are they going into a lead generation capture page? Are they using video sales letters? Do they have exit pops? Um, searching them on several sources. That's another thing. Uh, I'll see people who will do all this reverse engineering of an offer, but it was from Google traffic. And then they'll go and try to use that same process on email or a banner buy, and it won't work, or Facebook. Because different media sources actually act different. 
uh, if that makes sense. Um, so you, there is no like, hey, I got this funnel and this is it. And if you think that right now and it's actually making you money, that's good news. I would challenge you though to not use one funnel for every traffic source. Um, split tests, do all different types of things that you can do per source. Um, that in itself has helped us to really scale what we do on, on different offers. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. You know, just look at what they're doing. Are they consistent? What do they change? You were talking about overlaying landing pages. That's awesome. Do they use pre-sale pages? Um, if a company's been buying for months and years from a specific advertising source, what are they doing? What's working? Why is it working? I, I've, I've seen this, I can't stress this enough, where we're in our business eight months in and we finally figure something out. And I go back and I look at the research I did eight months before and I'm like, oh crap, that's why he was doing that is because of this. And it happens because I didn't pay enough attention to thinking about what the process was with the person coming through that funnel, through the copy, through the landing page, through whatever. So invest as much time as you can there. Get, if, you, if you have partners, if you have people in your office, let them get their eyes in this. And, and uh, I can't remember who said it. If you have people around you who are your demographic as well, get their eyes on your business. Don't let it be your office staff. If you're selling to women 50 and above and your staff is men 30 and below, don't listen to them. Okay? Go to your demographic and find out what they want. Um, okay. That's just view source. You were talking about ghostry. I, I didn't do, this is, I think this is my last thing on reverse engineering. Um, a lot of times when I go through funnels, and this might have been mentioned, I was out of the room, but I'll often find a lot of good stuff when I'm viewing the source of pages throughout a funnel because I can see different things are going to retarget, remarket. Um, they'll sometimes have like six different, I, did, I think I sent one to Ed a year or two ago. I just was looking through one of his competitors' funnels and in the view source it just showed the scheduling of the retargeting for their ads was in their source code. Well, that's pretty valuable data and it's different products they were offering. It was all in their source code. It's like coming it out, so it was more for the programmers to understand how to program, how to do, but it was all right there. Um, you also find pixels from all different types of advertising sources on people's thank you pages. Um, so you'll know where they're advertising from because if you're paying a media buyer, sometimes you're getting paid per sale. Um, track those pixels. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. So, all right. Um, Camtasia, Jing, the whole process. I just added this because uh, I heard you talk about this is what they get and why Vinny was so into his first question or one of the first questions was can we have your media list and why is that so important? That's like if that's all you walked away from and you paid uh, whatever your investment was here, to me that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars um, because you can spend hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars trying to figure out what he's giving you um, which is what's the media list. It's so important. Uh, to know the places that work. Because here's the thing, good traffic always makes money. Bad traffic always loses money. So if you have an offer that starts to die, come up with another offer, another front end. Because once you have a, a good source of traffic, you, just, you can pump that sucker for the rest of that source being around. If that's Google, if that's Facebook, if it's a, an email drop, if it's a, a banner buy, uh, always look for other things to sell to the traffic. Uh, because good traffic will always be good traffic. I can't stress this, that enough uh, as well. So this is um, a good friend of mine, <clears throat> Drew Canoli. I always tease him that I feel like the second best looking man in the room when he's around. And um, <laughs> Why is that a joke? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so uh, what Drew's done that I think is very, very impressive is um, he's actually doing what he's extraordinarily, ridiculously passionate about. Uh, and he's doing it in a really cool way um, that he's able to grow a really nice business out of. And um, I think he's really, after all the things he's even done, I think he's really just at a, a point where it's about to launch even to a completely different level. So um, new, diff slightly different model. You're starting to see how like these things are like a 360 degree. Uh, there's many different ways to do this. Um, and I think you're going to see that a lot of things that he's doing is is just really, really, really can and or should be added onto any supplement or uh, product business. So with that said, let's give it up for Drew Canole. All right. Appreciate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can everybody hear me? Cool. All right. A little higher. Can you hear me now? 
All right, so today we're going to go over the seven ahas to redefine your business and help you build a movement, a passion. You see, four years ago, I was 40 pounds heavier. I was lethargic, tired all the time, out of shape. I was running a credit and debt settlement company in Florida, and I wanted to help people get healthy. So I knew that if I was going to help others be their best, their highest optimum self of who they were, I had to actually lose weight on my own. And it was a blessing because as I started to lose weight and get into shape, I was recording it. And this is when YouTube you know, was taking off four years ago. And I started making these little videos, two minutes, three minutes, these really authentic, integrity-driven, congruent videos. And people started to watch, and they're like, wow, I don't feel like Drew's speaking at me. I feel like he's speaking with me, like he's my friend, right? So everything that we do is about being congruent, being consistent, and providing a lot of value. It's the CCB, right? So I'm going to talk to you about that. I'm going to show you our whole entire funnel. A lot of you are probably new, just starting off. If you need me to repeat something or slow down, just raise your hand, let me know, and we'll continue to rock this thing out. So here we go. Our goal in the very beginning was to create something so freaking powerful that, and this should be your goal as well, that if you or your team, the people that are working around you, were to fall off the face of the earth tomorrow, your fans or your people, your buyers, would pick it up and run to the moon with it or whatever, right? How many people would want that type of fan leadership in your community? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Can I get a yeah? So here's some other uh, movement. You guys have seen these, obviously. Apple, Facebook, Amway, Star Wars, The Avengers. Has anybody seen the new Avengers movie yet? Yes. How great was that? It was awesome. I've got four children. How am I not going to see it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So here's a little lesser known movement, but a movement, right? We picked a niche in the very beginning that we wanted to target on. There was a lot of weight loss and fitness gurus out there uh, teaching you how to get a six pack, how to lose weight, all these other things. And we wanted to micro niche it out. So I think that's important to develop a micro niche within the industry, or whatever you're trying to create in. And we picked juicing. You know, three and a half, four years ago, uh, Joe Cross, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, had in, the documentary wasn't out. How many people have seen that documentary where the guy juices and loses a bunch of weight, everything else? So we decided to pick juicing as kind of the, the spearhead of our whole marketing message. And it worked fairly well. We picked up about 1.5 million followers on this particular fan page through being consistent with our videos, right? So these iPhone, YouTube little videos here. And uh, one thing we do a little bit differently as well is we boost all of our posts on Facebook. Now we do. We used to get tons of organic reach, but organic reach is basically dead, right? It's like at 1% or 2% or less, and it's going down by the second. So we boost it. This has 300,000 views. And we may have spent like 50 bucks to get this out here. And um, the return on those investments can be pretty substantial. Can I ask you a question? You boost all of them or only We boost the everything. Day? Really, all yeah. of them? Yeah. And we watch to see which one starts to lift and go viral, and then we'll throw more money behind and it. And hit another boost to it? Exactly. So we're continuously watching. And here's some of the ads that hey, we hey run. Hey, Drew. All right. So I'm <laughs> sorry. On the boost, like, do you guys have an actual uh, parameter to see how much like shares per hour or, every, or any kind of metric you're looking at to see, OK, now let's bump the budget on that? Generally, it's about 10 likes a minute on that particular fan page with 1.5 million, but all yeah. fan pages are different. And if you can hit that marker, you know that it's a good post. Um, and you know in your niche what's going to go viral. A real cool app that Roland actually showed us at Traffic and Conversion was called buzzsumo.com. And you can go there. It's like, what, 99 bucks a month or something like that. And it shows you all of the viral stuff that's happening in your network of whatever you're marketing in. So we'll pick topics to make videos on that are already proven to go viral on other people's websites. So for us, Mind Body Green is one of our competitors, Wellness Mama, Dr. Axe, some of these other people, we'll see what's gone viral there, and then we'll turn it into a, a different type of media that they're not accessing, which is normally video, because not a lot of people are doing these consistent videos like we're doing. So here's some of these other ads um, that we run to get people to Organifi.com. I think our best one, Jamel, was this one up in the corner, right? Yeah. This is actually Mike Chang's girlfriend, which is pretty cool. We <laughs> sent her <laughs> a whole year's supply of greens, and she absolutely loves this stuff. So, And then here's some of the other ones. 
Um, we have two, we have Drew's five day detox and Juice with Drew, which I'll share with you. And the entrance to those funnels are landing pages that look similar to this, which Facebook and Google hate, obviously. But um, they go here, they opt in. A really cool thing about this is it gets results right away with what we were creating online. So it's a five day reset. So you reset your body, retrain your taste buds. People do this, they feel the results, they feel better, and then it leads them down the path to becoming a buyer of the Juice with Drew system, which is 97 bucks. We're split testing some stuff on there and incorporating Organifi into this as well. Uh, but it's an actual digital product. So if you can cover the cost of your ad spend with the digital and then increase on the back end of your physical product, that would be one of the, the big goals. And then also with the content that you guys are creating, you know, if you decide to go that route and develop consistent content, then another thing you can do is turn it into a book, which we've done. So juicing recipes. Um, for vitality and health, just a ton of recipes, and then you can turn that into another channel for money, like an iTunes or an Android app. So same content, just used a different way, right? Everybody's getting that so far? Pretty easy. Here's our main blog, which is uh, fitlife.tv here. And when we started this, it was just like a WordPress blog, right? I was writing a post maybe once a week but it was consistent. We were doing what's called Saturday strategy. So every week I would pick a strategy of health. Got that from Carl White. I don't know if you guys know Carl, but he does some strategies in the mortgage niche. And the theory is everybody's gonna show up once a week to watch this video. So if you're consistent with your message, you can pick any day, it doesn't have to be Saturday, and it's something new, something fresh, tied to a giveaway, which you mentioned a little bit earlier, um, that really helps spur along the conversation. So we've been giving away a juicer every single week for the past three and a half, four years on our Saturday strategies. And what we do is, is we ask the community to provide us comments of how they've changed their life given the information that we're providing online. So we're asking them for that kind of stuff. They leave the comment, and then we make them the star of the show during the next Saturday strategy. You know, big shout out to Judy in Nebraska. She's got off four of her diabetes medication. She's changing her life. She's feeling better. She's inspired her whole family. She's getting the juicer. So when starting a movement, it's not about you. It's bigger than you, right? And it has to be because you got to let your people take it and run with it. And um, that's a really cool thing that has helped us tremendously. So here's the typical Saturday strategy. 23 ways you can painlessly cleanse your body Right? It kind of went semi-viral. 207,000 shares, uh, 59,000 likes on Facebook. And this video actually was just shot with my iPhone. No fancy production. Real simple and easy. Uh, we have found recently with content marketing, and you guys talked about this at Traffic too, the bigger the title, so 23 things, is doing much better than like five to seven things. Like a year ago it was the short number, now it's like as much stuff as you can put on this blog the better. And uh, the more you can get them to scroll, the better as well, which we've been doing, and that's paid off big time. So let's dive right in there. So um, as you can see up on, the, up on the screen is my crew. I will probably refer to my family way more times than you'll like. Like, you're going to be sick of me by the end of the week. Uh, but, you know, they are they're everything that, you know, when I, the way we design the business, the way we run the business, the time we have. Um, Everything is about them in my, in my estimation and everything else comes second after that. Um, a funny story, last night I, my wife says to me, it's like 10.30, I'm reviewing uh, some of the applications just to get my head right. And uh, my wife says to me, she goes, um, and my, my daughter Reese, which I know we shouldn't let our kids still be up at 10.30, but whatever. Uh, she's, she's, She's my, uh, she's in the middle with the curlies and the smile right there and the butterfly in her shirt. She's what, eight or nine or something like that. And she's doing her homework. <laughs> Once you get past like four or five, you just start, you stop worrying about their ages. Yeah, I, you know, like, it's, you know, like, um, you, you get the whole like, uh, 
it's 930 and she pulls out her I'm the star student of the week thing, which you have to let her finish because she literally is. This is her week. She's got to get it up there. She hasn't done it. I'm like, are you seriously kidding me? Like, you, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, you know, I'm sure Nanny and I all would say, well, if you had rules and structure, you wouldn't have those problems. I'm like, yeah, well, why don't you have kids of your own one of these days, Nanny and I will want and stop going to other people's houses and wrecking their lives. Anyhow. <laughs> anyhow. So anyhow, my wife says to me, she goes, uh, um, do you have your backpack? I'm like, oh, I have some stuff out. And my kids get a little parent. They're like, well, where's dad gone? And Reese goes, well, dad, are you leaving? And I, no, we're going, dad's running a seminar, and he's going to be at a hotel locally. And she goes, a seminar? What's that? Uh, well, people are coming to see dad speak. <laughs> and there was like this pause. And then she goes, why would they do that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Reese, wait up. Give me material for tomorrow morning. Um, this is, so that's my career. This is what the family I grew up in. So that's my mom and dad. They're still alive. They're 83 years old. I have uh, 12 brothers and sisters, eight brothers and four sisters. And those are all the grandchildren and great-grandchildren. There's 54 of them. Michael's one of the great-grandchildren over there. Um, Michael, besides doing our uh, joint ventures and affiliate stuff, Michael worked at the Division I level as a strength and conditioning coach for, what, nine years, Mike? Something like that? Um, great story about Mike is uh, he, he was leaving one school, and he, a buddy said he might have a job at another school. So he packed up everything in his uh, dorm room, stuck it in his thing, went to their school. And when he got there, they were like, uh, what, what college was it? Was Texas A&M? Or no? uh, that was on the way to Dallas, so SMU. SMU, uh, Southern Methodist University? Yeah. They're like, well, we don't have a position for you anymore. Well, two weeks later, the coach is like, Mike's still in the training people. So I think he said, oh, I'll stay a few days and help out. Well, then two weeks later, he's still there. And the coach is, well, what are you doing? He's like, well, I, I know where to go. I'm here. <laughs> and the next thing you know, they offered him a job. And he had a job. And then after that, did you go to Mississippi State University? Yeah. And so then uh, now he's, he's home and uh, got, you know, he's in love. Uh, they were all talking about when's Michael getting married, and then uh, yeah, I'm like he's got a plan. This is Eddie and Ireland. Uh, Eddie and Ireland are awesome. They're like our 13-month-old uh, uh, awesomeness of everything. They're just great. So I hope you get to meet them. There's my crew again. And um, one thing I want to tell you, like, so the the thing is, is that so I always ask this question. I love this question. So like, what do you see when you look at the screen there? And um, for time's sake, I. This is the interaction part, but I'm gonna, we're gonna be a lot, we're gonna be very interactive. But you know, like, what, what do you see there, right? And Maceo, what do you see there? Flight. Flight, grill and air, right? But what you don't see is like, that, that's of what was underneath that flight. And um, one of the reasons I decided to actually come out of hiding and teaching, I'll tell you two, two reasons, two strong drivers is, I really enjoyed teaching and coaching dentists, like on marketing. I really enjoyed it. I think I, nine years was too long, like in one market. I think I got a little burnt out of saying the same. There's only seven ways to really grow dental practice, and you're just changing how to say it every time. And I kind of got burnt out of that. And I wanted to see if I could grow a business that didn't revolve around me. It was revolved around a product, right? And so that was one main motivator. The second main motivator was just kind of out of frustration. And so what I mean by frustration is that I am way more concerned about what you don't see than what you do see. And what I mean by that is like this is um, uh, JT Torres, world champion, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy. This is, uh, uh, this is me coaching some of the teams that I coached. Um, I'll go back a second. But this is what you see with our athletes nowadays. You see them. You see them. You see them at the victory on the stand. But what most people don't really realize, like Steve Young, you're training for what competition? Physique competition. Is that where you get to wear like a spandex and stuff? No, sir. Uh, <laughs> board shorts. Oh, you do? You get to wear actually yeah, real get, shorts. Yeah, cool. Real shorts, yeah. OK, not my, the Michael Phelps look. But um, <laughs> were you up this morning training? Is that what I understood? Yeah. So what time did you get up, can I ask? Five, were you excited to be up at 5 a.m.? Are you like in that passion, like I'm so excited to be up at 5? No, not, you had a, not until 5.30 that I feel that way. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, if you've ever been around like really high level athletes and people training for a specific like thing, they're going through a grind. It's a grind process. Like there's no way to shortcut going through that process of going from where you are to where you want to be in a unique fashion. And so 
what I get a little frustrated with sometimes is just how people make things seem super, super easy, but they leave out the grind part, right? And so the other side of that is, is, is I want to come out in the sense that this is how we did it. This is everything that I did wrong, and there's a ton of it. Um, but this is what worked. And then here's other things that work for other people, and here's world-class guys and gals, and go do it, right? And, and here's the big difference, right? This is a distinction that, and you, you, need to, you need to understand, this is a distinction. So when my son Michael was, um, he's nine now, when he was six maybe, five, whatever, he was like five or six, um, we have our, the way our houses are laid out in Chicago, like our, our neighbor's backyard is only a few feet there. We have some space, but um, he ran in my neighbor's house. My daughter was in the bathroom. He comes running out, and he's about to go to the bathroom in his pants. And my neighbor, Sheila, just says, Michael, just pee in the, by the flowers. So what does he do? Pees in the flowers. Life's great. Nola texts me. Uh, Mike just peed in the backyard. We had a chuckle about it. Well, the next day, I get another text message saying that Michael just took a dump in the neighbor's yard. <laughs> and so, so, uh, so why is that really important? Because he did everything right. He just did it in the wrong place, right? But see, he didn't know that. He just did that. And so one of the things that um, when I was, what, when I decided to go into the supplement business, what kind of grabbed my attention was I was watching all these people launching products saying they're doing $30,000 a day, $40,000 a day, $50,000 a day. And here I was in my dental marketing business just doing like three grand a day, something like that, maybe more than that. I mean, it was, it was our best years, we got up to seven million, but we were doing like three to four million a year consistently. Now, we could go more in depth on how much was net, whatever, but that, that's not the point. But I was really attracted to this $50,000 a day concept. And I literally was like, screw this stuff. I'm going over here. And it was funny. Like Some of the guys I wrote in the report who introduced me to some of these guys, they didn't put the caveat. Like, the shit they're teaching doesn't work anymore. And I was like, but I didn't know that. So I'm very, uh, we're, we'll talk about like the mindset here, but like that stuff, in my opinion, drives me up the wall. So this week, you're not going to get stuff that doesn't work anymore. And if it doesn't work or did work, well, I'm going to let you know. I mean, like Dave, 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 can you raise your hand? Dave is from Macromark. We do, uh, we just ran out of our inventory of Marine D3 because we're running um, remnant newspaper ads with Dave. But I met Dave through when we started off in Marine D3 doing direct mail. I mean, the fact of the matter is, guys, direct mail doesn't work anymore, right, Dave? No, it still works and it's killing it for uh, people. Where's uh, Matchick? Or am I saying your name right? Yeah. So, um, you're, are you the online coordinator, operations guy for a company that's doing a ton of direct, like tons of direct mail and um, investing a ton of money in that channel, right? And, and we'll talk to Dave more later on today, but um, Roland, you don't do any direct mail at all. It does a million of pieces a month. So the, the, the point is, is that what doesn't work is really a relative thing. But we really do want to know is what's those distinctions <coughs> about what is working and what's not working. Um, so you're not crapping in the neighbor's yard when you're doing everything right, but you're in the wrong location. Does that make sense? And, and those, are, those are key distinctions. A um, couple little quick things. Uh, it's the driver, not the vehicle. So, the question I always have is like, um, mental constructs of how you approach this whole thing. There is really no way you can walk out of this event without creating a really uh, tipping point uh, opportunity for your life from a financial perspective if this is the business you want to be in. There, there really, there's no way. There's absolutely no way. So get that in your head right away. Because there's this concept, I read this in a book a long time ago, it's a book called Mastery by Tim Peering. Um, and he talked about how could you have a guy, how could you have three different people, 
One guy's teaching how to flip homes. The other guy's teaching how to uh, uh, do just do rentals. And then another guy's talking about commercial real estate. It's all in real estate. And they're all saying this is the best way to make money. And they're all teaching something completely different, or just say it's different for the heck of it. Um, yet they are making wealth out of it. And 99% of their students aren't, right? And so it goes to that thing that it's, it's about the driver of the vehicle, not the, always the vehicle. Does that make sense? So this is about you. This is about us making it happen. We're, you know, there's nothing, uh, I don't think there was one, I don't think easy was used more than three or four times in a 62 page report. I don't remember ever using the word easy. Um, there are things that are easy, but you have to be willing to go through the grind to kind of learn this out. And what my job and our speaker's jobs and our sponsor's job is to shortcut all of that. Is that cool? Fair assessment there? Yeah, fair assessment? Okay. Uh, 5,000 reps, we all have read outliers. 5,000, 10,000 reps. When you go through that, you're going through the phase of overwhelm, confusion, and frustration. There's gonna be a point, hopefully at some point, where you are a little confused and a little overwhelmed. It's kind of by design because if you're not expanding your brain to a point where new neural connections are happening, then you're going to be like, oh, I already got this, I already got this, I already got all this. Well, the confusion pattern has to pop in. If you actually look at every aha moment you've ever had and every learning experience, there's a confusion state that happens naturally. So we have to be willing to go through that. Um, I think, Roland, when I interviewed you, you remember when you talked about that? And I said, hey, how do you get through that phase of, uh, confusion and you actually went into it